get a fast car I want a ticket to anywhere Maybe we make a deal Tracy Maybe Chapman? We can, get somewhere. can you do your Tracy Chapman again? We're gonna make it different Tracy Chapman and the guitars again we're gonna have okay, a I few wish that the Sorry. people on radio could see this. Like James Hinchcliffe is in studio, just staring. <laughs> James, James is now at leaving the show. The face just just makes it so much yeah, more yeah. disturbing. Yeah, it does. Doesn't you it? Know, we're gonna go to I blame my father for everything, <laughs> and we're gonna make it. It's got like a lower this, lip thing that yeah, makes the and, jaw. And, and I feel like the lyrics are now going a little too personal. Like that, yeah. that's not in the song. No, this, this is, is coming. Song. This is coming from is, somewhere deep inside you, man. Fast car is about struggles. That's no, not about me. And I like the Portuguese buffet. <laughs> I think that's what Tracy said. That's what she's saying. We had the Tracy reference earlier in the show, so you got stuck with fast cars. Fair enough. In. Fair J- enough. James Hinchlip. Speaking of fish. Normally we wouldn't be that cliche. No, we wouldn't. Hopefully. Speaking of fish. Are you all about this uh, Ripley's? I'm just pointing paper at you. <laughs> oh, you handing me something? <laughs> there's nothing on it. Am I uh, about what? The, um, okay, so there's an aquarium happening yes. downtown Toronto. There is. Ripley's, believe it or not, aquarium. So yes. obviously that's you, the name. You've heard of this? I have. Have oh. they asked you to do anything for it? They have not. Okay. okay. I have we don't want to ruin a sponsorship yeah. for you. If, no. Because he's going to rip on it now. All right, go all for right. it. I think I, my personal stance on aquariums <laughs> are there. <laughs> <laughs> They're just kind of ridiculous. Fundamentally against They're aquariums. Fun- I'm, 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 I have a thing against aquariums. More or less hatred than Environment Canada. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Which was our last, the last <laughs> time I was here when there was a read about you, Environment Canada. You cut to the core, me, <laughs> <Yes. Club. laughs> That is true. Oh, that's right, because when, when James came in, did we have like a hurricane? And no, get yeah, it was the flood. Warning? Like the whole city was flooded. Oh, and there was like a, there was a, there was a probability of rain or something. You know, there was like a fl- <laughs> environment. Canada a rain just, storm just warning. Issue, environment Canada issues a warning. Hey, could be something. <laughs> so <laughs> wait, so what's wrong with uh, so what's wrong with the Ripley's Aquarium? What's going on? Oh, there's just like a lot. Of, first off, it's thirty bucks. Come on, that's for that's fish. Deep. That's steeper. I mean, sushi, yeah. But. Go to Long John Silver's, like, clean up <laughs> yeah. for 20 There you go. Are you kidding me? Absolutely. Anyway. Oh, my goodness. He doesn't this is have why kids. I like James' so he, studio. He doesn't have any idea of what people do to entertain their kids. Right. And, and, kids and like aquariums. It, yeah. They That's like to fact. look at kids, kids TV on demand now. Hello. Well, imagine, if had, imagine if you had three kids and had to go. It's like, it's an expensive day. It is an expensive day. Thank bucks. you. But hold on a second. Wow, look at that swordfish. There are, ba- not that you know anything about this either, but there are very nice bachelor pads that use aquariums very well. As- yeah, it's true. Yeah. I, I saw Deuce Bigelow. Yep. <laughs> yep. Bingo. See? I get it. See? I, I'm picking up for laying down, man. See, I was thinking of, who is the soccer player who built a three-floor aquarium? <laughs> oh, my God. Dwayne, Andy, Dwayne de Rosario. No, it wasn't. No, it, it was, wasn't him. It wasn't it him. It might have been Thierry Henry. Oh, Thierry Henry did, yeah. Built yeah. a three-floor aquarium yeah. in his apartment. I mean, you could drown a guy in that. <laughs> That's got a, it's got a double purpose, See, too. Yeah. You could <laughs> never, take care of some problems. Never You're trust dark. a guy yeah. with a three-floor <laughs> right? aquarium, because if you piss him off, <laughs> you may end up in season it. three of The Sopranos. He's not going to drown you in a, in a 12 by 24 no, inch kind of... I can no. get out of that situation. No. That's like a toilet. It is confirmed. It is Thierry Henry, 40-foot high aquarium. In his house. Wow. Hashtag Arsenal. James Hinchcliffe in studio. But um, that's not car racing. That we're no, that's not. So we went. You can. Let's, let, let's go car racing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, season's winding down. You're coming off, again, the, the back-to-back races. Yes. Which was the deal with the Indy here. Correct. In Houston. Um, we're, we're, as we're winding down, describe your season in a word. How would you describe it? Roller coaster. Is that one word? That's one word, right? Technically, it's we'll one word. We'll make it one word. Yeah, that's yeah. one word. It's a compound We'll throw word. in an ex ante goo and we'll make it one. <laughs> ex uh, yeah, no, it's it's been an up and down year, man. I mean, we've had obviously some uh, some great results and getting getting a handful of wins in there. But then I think of somebody told me, God bless Twitter, that I've been last like four times as well. So that's, uh, you know what? That's odd. Twitter never points out your faults. It's, no, no, never. It's weird. It never uh, it's, does. It was that. a first. That I have a negative at all. <laughs> no, not no. at all. So it's been up and down. But you know, we came off uh, even the, the the race in Houston summed up my entire season. Race one uh, stalled in the start and got got hit out nine centimeters into the race into a 90 lap race and then you know sunday we're on the podium so we uh we can be strong when we're running we just have a problem you know getting to the end of all these things do the do the w's plural wins plural does that like does that i know roller coaster doesn't denote that you're taking the next step but do you feel like you've taken the next step in your career with a few of those wins yeah, I, I do. I do. Yeah. It's uh, certainly when once you've won one and, and you know how to do it, you know what that feels like. It does. I mean, everybody says it makes it easier. It's still really friggin' hard to win an IndyCar race. Don't don't get me wrong. 
but but mentally, you know, the, the p- place that you're in is, you know, as an athlete uh, is, is a lot different. And and I think from, you know, my personal point of view and from within the industry, the team owners and sponsors and see, hey, this kid can win now. So it's right. uh, it is a step for sure. I, I mean, and from a marketing standpoint, I mean, obviously people here at Rogers have been I mean, I ran I ran into you at the Rogers up front mm-hmm. um, and we're going up the escalator and I turn to you. I'm like, I'm. I'm seeing you more than like commercials for Super Fun Night. Yeah, uh, for for Rogers, right. like like your, your your exposure this year across the board. You have to be happy with that. Oh, it's it's been huge. You know everything that's that's happened here. Um, you know back home with with you guys taking on the TV rights for IndyCar and everything has been uh, has been huge. And the exposure back home has been huge, and it's great. Definitely winning races helps. That was a that was the first thing after the race in St. Pete. It was the first race of the season and. You know, Sportsnet's first race, uh, doing the race, doing the IndyCar races, and we won the race. And like, you know, I get an email from Scott Moore afterwards, being like, "Thank you, keep doing that, and things will be just fine." You know, <laughs> yeah. so no the, pressure. The, but, are evil. the plan <laughs> is working accordingly, <laughs> yeah. James. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Just short of the cat, and, and that was it. But <laughs> oh, he has a cat. <laughs> <laughs> if you win the next race, I'll give you one million dollars. <laughs> well, I asked for one hundred billion, but he didn't. Oh, he didn't go for that. Yeah. No, didn't no. do that. Um, What's it doing south of the border? Because we've kind of seen with with uh, Sportsnet taking it on, and we're kind of immersed in that. But what's it doing south of the border? Is it is it getting a little bit more play? It's it's it has its ups and its downs. You yeah. know, it's weird. the uh, The race at the five hundred, for example, this year was incredible. You know, it was I think the most lead changes that the race has ever seen, and uh, and attendance at the race was awesome. Um, and then you know we have we have other races that are kind of kind of faltering a little bit. It's it's all it's all sort of part of it. It's very cyclical sometimes. You yeah. got the staple events, races like the five hundred, like Toronto, like Long Beach that have been around forever and, and will be probably around forever. And then other markets that were kinda, you know, picking and choosing. We just, you know, just found out that we're losing Baltimore after, you know, a three year stretch there trying to make that one work. And uh you know, the Northeast is a big market that we don't have any races in anymore, so we'll have to try and figure something out right. for uh for that neck of the woods. But it's uh you know there's there's a lot of positive things going on. Uh, the schedule next year is going to be formatted a bit differently, kind of shorten the season up, make it almost follow the uh, the NFL sort of you know mentality of race every week and then you know stop right. rather than having the big month long break like we just had. Before will, they, will they'll be adding wild cards? <laughs> they will, there'll be no wild cards. There'll be some wild cards thrown in. That'd be nice. Um, you mentioned Indy. What was the crowd in Indy this year? How big was that? Oh man, I think uh, in the stadium was just shy of three hundred thousand, and then. A bunch more, you know, tailgating and hanging out outside. Stop me if this is a stupid question. And by tailgating, you mean partying, partying immensely. like crazy. Oh, like 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 paralytically drunk. <laughs> <laughs> not not entirely aware that there's actually a race, race going yeah. on. Yeah, they realized they were they came there for the race <laughs> and left forgetting that it ever happened. After, yeah. yeah. When <laughs> when there's a crowd that big, and you're in the machine, you're in. It's pretty loud. Do you hear them? You don't hear them, but you can see them. Which is which is funny because you know you're you're doing almost 400 kilometers an hour and everything's kind of a blur, but when when something happens that they like and everybody stands up, you you feel like you're seeing a whole building kind of move and they move a bit closer. You're, you're kind of like, whoa, what's what's so, happening? So something happens two turns away, and that like that initial moment, you know something's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah it could be a, a good pass for the lead or it could be a wreck. You know, it could be a bunch of things, but you sometimes get visual cues from uh, from the stands. It's crazy. Wow, that is crazy. Uh, James Hinchcliffe in studio here on Tim and Sid. Uh, you brought up a wreck, and we have to we have to talk about what transpired in Houston. And um, after your thoughts go to, and obviously uh, all of our thoughts go to Dario Fanchitti and what happened. But after your thoughts go to the man and the fans in the stands, where do you, does your mind go? And where do you allow it to go in a, in a moment like that where it's, a, for those who didn't see it, a scary, scary wreck? Yeah, that was, it, was, it was a terrifying end of the race, you know, and, uh, and we're very lucky that, that Dario only, I say only, you right. know, suffered the injuries that he had. He still, you know, got, got beat up pretty bad. And um, it's tough, man. It's, it's the worst part of our sport, but it's, it's a part of our sport that we're all very conscious of. And um, the, the big thing for us is we, we're always trying to improve you know, the safety, not just for us, but like you say, for the fans and the officials and everybody. And there are every time a car gets in the fence and, you know, it's, it's obviously happened to us recently. It happened in in a, in a NASCAR race last year. And, uh, and we're always trying to look to improve that technology. And so it's, there'll be probably a a reinvigorated charge to, uh, get some research done and some studies done on what maybe an alternative could be, or do we do a, 
a tighter weave of fence or a different material of fence or whatever to try and improve it. And that's kind of what you, you rely on. Like, hey, this, this could get better. Let's, let's not think about it. Right. So you don't even think about the, the other side of it. I mean, it's you, you, you do, but you don't like to acknowledge that you do. You right. know, it's, uh, like I said, it's something that we are reminded of every, every once in a while, unfortunately. And you'll never be able to make this sport 100% safe. And, right. and these are the risks that we accept. You know, there's, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the, the new movie Rush out. Heard amazing right things. Now. I haven't seen it yet. But, uh, you know, Nikki Lauda, who's, I say character, but, you know, obviously a real guy. Um, at, at that stage in, in Formula One, they were, they were losing two guys a year. Yeah. And so he's like, you got you got a twenty percent chance of not walking away from this deal, and that's the amount of risk I'm willing to take, and not one percent more. And we're very very lucky that nowadays that that risk is significantly lower. Yeah. What yeah. what incident um, gave you most pause for thought about what you do for a living, or any? Well, I mean, you, you could go all the way back to when Greg Moore was killed. Yeah. I, I wasn't even. I mean, I was racing go karts at the time. But I knew that I wanted to be an IndyCar driver, and Greg's my hero, and and your hero gets killed doing what you want to do. It's, I mean, that's for a twelve year old kid. That was a a pretty profound moment. Um, and then obviously, you know, what happened in Vegas last year, sorry, in two thousand and eleven, was uh, was very big because that was something that I was part of. And um, it's 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 real tough, man. It's it's a very tough thing to accept. But I think all of us have some kind of screw loose and. We still decide to, you know, strap in and uh, and see what we can do on on race day. And it's not just, you know, for those listening, it's not just your sport. I mean, every time a guy steps on the ice to play hockey, um, he's assuming a risk, knowing that with you know knives basically strapped to his feet, that there's a. Ri- any time a football player steps on the field, people die playing football, and yeah. and we, those things happen. And we're hearing a lot about the long term effects of all these right. micro concussions in football right. at the minute. And so yeah, it's yeah, it is. It's it's any sport. You're right. Um, we just, racing's developed to the point where y- you get a lot of injuries in other sports. Yeah. There's not a lot of injuries in racing. Right. You know, there's, obviously. There's no gray, is right. what you're telling me. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, Dario's deal, he, he got away with injuries. Yeah. But it's, a lot of times, it's kind of all or nothing. Yeah. Um, James Tinchcliffe. It is faster. For, yeah. You know, a human mind to do what it does to allow you to do what you <laughs> like do. Like I said, it's not all yeah. there. I think that's the, <laughs> that's the key point. No, I know. It's missing a fundamental survival instinct, I think. Uh, one of the things that you use to protect yourself, I know that you guys did something on, on uh, Hinchtown.com that's really cool. And uh, it's a redesign of your helmet or a design for your helmet. Where are you on that? And has a fan actually designed your helmet? Yes. So, uh, yeah, the, the Hinchtown, the Hinch Helmet Design Contest. And it was uh, a chance for fans to design the helmet that I'll wear for the final race in Fontana uh, in next week, couple weeks, two couple, weekends. Couple, couple, weeks. couple weeks. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we had, uh, we had six finalists and the fans all got to vote and it was actually uh, a guy from Oakville. I mean, we had, we had submissions Texas from Rick, Europe. Texas <laughs> Rick. You got Glenn no. Abbey, you must take everything else too. <laughs> <laughs> Oakville guys. So Shout we, out Ponty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guy. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, no, it was good. It was, we had, I mean, we had people from Italy, Spain, you know, all, all over the world actually, uh. Uh, submitted and and it was it was a kid from just down the street that that won so he's gonna his design will be on on my lid for Fontana and he actually gets a replica of the helmet that he designed that's awesome that's as nice. a prize yeah. that's awesome. pretty cool so quickly after the season vacay downtime what's your schedule L- little bit of everything some business stuff but going to England to visit uh, my brother thirtieth birthday uh, wait that was supposed to be a surprise I really hope he's not listening don't worry no one listens no one listens to the show. show okay good <laughs> All right uh, I got a cruise planned never been on one of those. And then my girlfriend and I are doing uh, Australia for Christmas and New Year's. Oh, nice. All right. I got the same next three months plan. There you go. That's what, I'll see you there. I see you the cruise. Boom. <laughs> yeah, I could see you just got mead. I want to be watching season three of Homeland. Who am I kidding? <laughs> on his couch with potatoes. On my couch. Uh, James, always, uh, yeah, always an open door policy with no, you, No, thanks, guys. All Appreciate the best. It. Take care.